Good morning, folks. Today is a day for stars, what they do, how they do it, and more strong implications for the Earth's catastrophe cycle. Perhaps as appropriately as ever, we begin with the last 24 hours on our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the primary focus on the development and progress of the incoming active region on the left. Zooming in on the southern hemisphere and shifted to the incoming limb, compare its highly active umbral fields with the established grouping moving towards the right side. We'll have eyes on it and move to the solar wind. It has been calm and relatively stable and we do expect that to continue. Let's begin the articles aesthetically. We've got two visualizations with the first modeling both the neutral components and the charged components of a nova remnant. Interesting that both models form the same loop features off the north and south poles, just as we see with the galactic Fermi bubble lobes. But the prettier animation comes as Apep has been modeled. Apep, the Egyptian god of chaos, often associated with the sun, goes to this system in name due to the wild wind ionic interaction. Veteran observers may recall the original observation of Apep taking this shape, which we said almost looks like the alien movie symbol. Spiral arm substructures around stars are important because they run with systems producing a rippling current sheet. Just as we can easily detect the current sheet and spiral solar wind patterns around stars like our sun, we are now able to also see the faint spiral structures around other stars too. At the stellar level, these are harder to see due to the lack of dust in stellar systems, but at the galaxy the spiral arms hold the majority of that dust and gas whereas it's the current sheet that's harder to see. On to the story that made big news yesterday, the destruction of a star. While we focus on the non-binary interaction potential for our sun with the galactic current sheet to trigger an outburst, we know that the binary systems can do it too. They claim here, a star came too close to a black hole and got shredded in spaghettification. I have no problem in general with the mechanism of accretion, accumulation, and blast off, but when we realize that our best observational capability of the system is this, and that they are claiming that the signal came from one star inside the distant galaxy, I'm left utterly dubious. It's theory and math on paper. A bit closer to the solar situation we face on a long cycle, there is no golden rule when it comes to the binary with which a star is interacting. It's merely the interaction that causes the accretion, accumulation, and again, blast off. Now last but not least, something much closer to the sun situation we mentioned. A poor little star wandered into a molecular cloud of dust and gas, and it exploded. Unlike most remnants identified with gorgeous sights of plasma and dust, this dark nova is visible because it blasted out a cavity within the cloud. Why did it do this? Because of the same accretion, accumulation, and blast-off mechanism. Requires only those first two A words. It does not require another star, and with the nearby stars to the sun already activating, the other planets changing as fast or faster than Earth is, the sheet likely engulfing our solar system for decades now, we merely await for the moment of magnetic shift in the galactic fields and for our sun to be overcome, beginning the next age of Earth. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.